Hey, real estate investors, James Wise with Holton Wise. Today's episode of Tenants from Hell features a tenant who violated a restraining order and crashed his car into our house. If you are a new landlord or property manager looking to educate yourself on the realities of the property management business, or maybe you're an experienced landlord or property manager who just wants to know that you're not alone, who just wants to know that the things that you're going through other people are going through them as well. This is the channel for you. So I want you to pound that subscribe button right now. Let's dive in. It's important to note when you're watching these Tenants from Hell videos that there is more to these videos than just the shock and awe of watching some people do some horrible things to real estate investors. There is always some type of lesson that can be learned from each of these situations. You see, when you're investing in rental real estate, bad things are going to happen. That is guaranteed. As a matter of fact, that is the only thing that is guaranteed in the property management business. There is an unlimited amount of risks at all times. It is our job as property managers, it is our job as real estate investors to mitigate those risks the best we can and then handle those bad situations as effectively as possible when they do occur because we cannot and we will never be able to eliminate all of these potential issues. Now in this situation, as I told you in the intro, the tenant violated a restraining order and then he crashed his car into the property. So the first lesson, the first thing I want you to take away from this video or this experience is that your tenants are going to lie to you. Let me repeat that. Your tenants are going to lie to you. If you are a brand new landlord, let that sink into your head. When your tenants are talking to you, whenever there's a situation, they are not just gonna come out and give you all the facts. They are gonna skew the truth to make themselves look like the victim at all times. They don't want to pay for things. They don't want to get caught. They don't want to get caught doing bad things. They don't want to get in trouble. So this situation, I already know that this guy violated a restraining order. So with that in mind, let's listen to the voicemail that the tenant who crashed his car into the house left. Hello, this is, uh, um, I live at, yeah, I was working at double shift yesterday, so I stepped her at the hospital. My trooper called me, like something happened at the house. Um, Something with the water outside. I don't know the whole story, but it's, I guess something busted on the outside of the house. Um, I didn't know, so if you guys can send someone to the house and take a look at what the heck happened. Um, it, like I said, the address is. Like I said, I don't know the whole story. She's saying that something happened with the pipe, well, I guess, last night, because like I said, I haven't been there in over a day. Um, like I said, I had to work a double and I just stayed there at the hospital. And I just heard the things first thing today in the morning. Um, like I said, so if you can, like, if someone like maintenance get over like first thing in the morning now, um, is that sound like, I don't know if it's bad or how bad it is. Um, it, like I said, it's five. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, call me back. Let's see what's internally happened. Uh, my number is four. Thank you very much. Bye. So according to this tenant, according to his version of events, he wasn't even at the property. Something just randomly happened to him. His unfortunate luck that something on the property just randomly burst or broke. All this water that you see right here just dumping out onto the driveway, the damage to the side of this house. This guy, he wasn't even there. He doesn't know what happened. This just randomly occurred. It must be our fault as the property manager or the landlord. So we need to get out there and fix that situation. But you see, a sophisticated property manager knows that that's not the whole story. Water pipes don't just spontaneously burst. Houses don't just spontaneously have damaged siding all over the side of it. These things don't just happen randomly. Whenever you have some weird vandalism or anything of that sort, it is usually very likely that the tenants themselves were the reason for this. Is it possible that someone from the neighborhood just randomly vandalized this house? Sure, that's possible, that does happen, but that's a one in a million shot. 
The more likely scenario is that the tenant themselves was the culprit for this type of vandalism. People don't just randomly attack houses. They're inanimate objects. That doesn't make any sense. In this particular situation, we actually have the facts to prove that this tenant is lying. At about the same time the tenant called in to report the previous night's events, we also had a concerned neighbor send our team an email. Your property on currently has water gushing out of the side of the house. Water has been pouring out the house all day long. The tenants in your property on had another domestic dispute that resulted in the police being called last night. The man who lives there drove his car out of the driveway at full speed and drove against the side of the house, ripping the drain pipe and water spigot clear off the house. There are repeated incidents at this house with the man who lives there. The house now has some considerable damage to the side from last night's incident. Can you please do something about the water that is currently gushing out of your property? As you can see, the email from the concerned neighbor and the voicemail from our very innocent tenant are two wildly different interpretations of how this house was actually vandalized. So who should we believe? Well, the tenant, he's incentivized to lie. If what the concerned neighbor said was true, that tenant is going to be liable for those damages. He doesn't want to get in trouble. He doesn't want to be evicted. The concerned neighbor, what is their motivation to lie? They really don't have one. So just from those two facts alone, we can come to the reasonable conclusion that our concerned neighbor is actually telling the accurate representation of the facts and our tenant is simply lying to save his skin. But there's more. The neighbor is saying that there is another domestic dispute. So according to the neighbor, these two people are just fighting constantly, constantly. And you see, here's the thing. When we actually placed this tenant, there wasn't two people. There was just one person. This guy went on the lease by himself. So who is this other person? And what is going on with all these domestic disputes? Upon further investigation, we were actually able to see that that night in question, there was actually a police report that was filed. See, our good old innocent tenant who wasn't even at his house when this damage occurred actually was at the house beating up his girlfriend whom has an active restraining order against him. Apparently he was fighting with her and then she called the police to get the police to come out to arrest him and he left the house in a fit of rage before the police were able to get there, damaging the property on his way out. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, you always say don't place tenants in properties that have domestic violence. Why did you guys place that tenant in this property if he has a history of domestic violence? His girlfriend has a restraining order against him. Well, that's another lesson I want to teach you guys. We can mitigate risks. We can reduce risk. We cannot eliminate all risks. When we placed this tenant in this property, we ran a criminal background check and this tenant did not have any history of domestic violence. On top of that, he was a single tenant. He moved into this property completely alone. After moving into the property, he got himself a girlfriend and then their relationship went south and all of his problems started to happen. That's the thing about crimes and criminal history. Nobody has ever committed a crime until the first time they've committed a crime. It's not as simple as saying, run their background. If they don't have any domestic violence charges, they never will have a domestic violence charge. Everyone has to get their very first charge. These things are going to happen. Somebody has to be the person renting him a house when he commits his first crime. Unfortunately, the way the cookie crumbled, it happened to be us this time. Next time, it could be you. So don't think that you can just automatically solve all your problems with proper tenant screening. Now tenant screening is incredibly important and you're going to eliminate a large majority of your problems, but you will not be able to solve 100% of them. This situation can happen to any real estate investor. It could happen to any landlord. It could be you the next time. And that is okay because this is still a highly profitable business. If you're doing the proper tenant screening over your entire portfolio, this will absolutely be the outlier and small little bumps in the road like this are not going to make or break your business. You shouldn't see too big of a hit to your overall ROI when these types of situations occur. The cost was relatively minimal. The cost to actually fix all of the damage, what we had to do is we had to go out, turn the water off, 
cap the pipes, turn the water back on, then fix some siding. We're looking at a total cost of around five, maybe $600. Now in this situation, we happen to have clear and concise evidence that 100% proves that the tenant was actually the person that caused all this damage. So going back and billing the tenant for all of those damages that have occurred because of this incident should be a relatively easy situation. If for some reason he still tries to hold on to that lie and he refuses to pay, we will simply evict him as all of our evidence will make for a very easy eviction case to win. That's it for today's story. I wanna know how you would have handled this story if this tenant did this to your property. And I also wanna know if you have any of your own tenants from hell stories. Post those in the comments below. If your tenants from hell story is exciting enough, I may even have you on one of my shows telling your story. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video, just like this one, to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.